for him, Sam? We have quorum. All right, excellent. Let's go ahead then. We have quorum. Okay, great. Thank you, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Well, welcome to the very first Sustainable Communities uh, Working Group meeting. Um, chair Tara Lawson Reamer is going to be the chair of this group moving forward, but she was unable to attend today. Um, so you're stuck with me. I'm Antoinette Meyer. I am the Senior Director of Regional Planning um, here at SANDAG. Um, chair Lawson Reamer is a member of the Regional Planning Committee. Um, she's also chair of the Regional Equitable Housing committee. So she's got a great interest in the topics that this group will be discussing and, and participating as your chair moving forward and really representing your voices at the regional planning committee. When we restructured the working groups this year, um, that was one of the improvements that we made. We wanted to make sure that you had that direct connection to the policy advisory committee that you um, report into today. So this is the first meeting of the Sustainable Communities Working Group. Last week, we actually had the first meeting of our Mobility Working Group. You were the two new working groups that came out of the restructuring that we did um, last year, and they had great participation, more than 60 um, participants, a lot of lively discussion. They took the full two hours. So I'm hopeful that we have um, some really engaging conversation today as well. Um, we've got some exciting topics um, on the agenda, a lot uh, related to housing because we have so much work going on um, in the housing realm um, and lots of opportunities to support all of you with your um, great housing work. So let's go ahead um, and do member introductions during item two on the agenda today, as opposed to doing the roll call um, right up front, because we want to give you time to, inter to introduce yourselves as a new working group member um, and share you know, what you do, the agency that you're with. So we'll, we'll go ahead and do that after the first item on the agenda, which is um, communications from members um, and the public. So are there any members of the public that wish to speak about an item that is not on today's agenda? If it's about an item on today's agenda, we'll reserve that for the public comment um, period during that item. Um, but members can go ahead and raise their hands now and you'll have three minutes to comment. Sam, can you tell me if we have any public comments? I do not see any hands right now. No, none at this time. Okay, great. Then we're going to move on to uh, member comments. Actually, starting with Sandag, I think we have um, an announcement, Sam, about the housing forum. That is correct. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Sam Solis. I am a housing planner here at Sandag. And as part of our housing acceleration program uh, and in collaboration with the Southern California Association of Governments, SCAG, um, I'm here to invite you all and your staff to join um, the Housing Policy Forum on Equitable Home Ownership. Uh, the forum will discuss um, home ownership trends, explore opportunities to create um, an equitable and sustainable housing ecosystem. Um, the forum will be on August 2nd and it will begin at 11 a.m. Um, please make sure you register in advance. Um, I will drop the link uh, in the chat for you all to register and pass to your colleagues. Uh, thank you all and that's my announcement. Thank you, Sam, and we hope to see you all um, at the, the housing forum. Um, do any members have comments or announcements to share? Please go ahead and raise your hand. I don't see any hands raised. Sam, am I missing anyone? There is no hands raised. I don't see any hands um, right now. None. Okay, great. Then we're going to go ahead and um, move into uh, the next item on the agenda, item two, which is an overview of the charter, um, membership, and work plan for um, this new working group. Um, they are attached to your agenda, so you can, and can reference them. And before we get into the work plan, though, I think it would be great to do introductions of all of the working group members. Um, many of you were part of the former technical working group, but we do have some new faces, and I'd like for each member to share their name, title, and if you could briefly talk about one or two major planning efforts that your agency is working on related to sustainable communities, um, that would be great. So we're gonna start um, with, um, I guess let's let's start with, I'm looking over um, at my panelists here. The first city that pops up is the city of Escondido. So 
it looks like we have Adam from the city of Escondido. Yeah, how are you guys doing? Adam Feinstone here. Of course, you put me on the spot and I'm first, huh? Nice. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, city of Escondido, I'm the city planner here. Um, we're currently still working on our housing element. I think that that's our uh, one of our biggest uh, efforts at this point. We've been working with, um, with uh, HCD and hopefully gonna get something back to them in the next two months or so. Um, part of that is our uh, is a rezoning effort that we're gonna that we're still working on undertaking for the creation of a specific plan where we'll be putting the density that would accommodate our arena numbers. That'll be following in a couple uh, months subsequent to the housing elements. So uh, a little bit about uh, Escondido and what our efforts are right there. Thank you. Uh, the next city up will be the city of Carlsbad, and that's either Jeff Murphy or Eric Lardy. Hello, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Eric Lardy, I'm the city planner, uh, alternate member for the city of Carlsbad. Um, Jeff Murphy isn't able to make it today. Uh, we have a number of planning efforts that uh, very much relate to, to this committee. The, the biggest and uh, largest is our housing element rezone program. We have our certified housing element, but we're moving through a rezone program and working closely with Sandeg on uh, customizing a model um, to complete our environmental impact report on that. Uh, we also have uh, two sets of objective design guidelines um, moving forward through state grants through uh, the city, one for our village area and one for citywide. Uh, so those are a couple of our uh, related projects. And Eric, we owe you an apology. When we reformatted the um, roster, the city of Carlsbad fell off, and um, we certainly didn't do that intentionally. So I'm glad you are here. You are definitely a valued member of this committee. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, the next city is Chula Vista, and that's either Todd Phillips or Laura Black. Hello, everybody. My name is Todd Phillips. I'm the planning manager here at the city of Chula Vista. Uh, like Adam, we are still working diligently on our housing element as well and working closely with HCT. Um, we do have a sustainability uh, commission here in Chula Vista, although I don't staff it. No one in my, on my staff staffs. I was looking at their agenda to see what the latest thing they were working on, and I didn't get it up before I was called. So, um, But we are uh, definitely committed to sustainability, and we're excited about being part of this committee. Thank you. The city of Coronado is absent at this time. And then up next is the county of San Diego, and that'd be Lynette Tessitor or Remy Talevi. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Lynette Tessitore, and I am the chief of long range planning. I oversee housing, transportation, a sustainable land use team, general plan, community plans, um, regulations and then a variety of board directed items. So we have quite a bit going on in the space of sustainability and sustainable land use. Um, we are currently working on a sustainable land use framework for the entire county of San Diego, um, an incorporated area. And then we also are currently updating our transportation study guide um, with identified thresholds to meet SB 743. And, um, and then we also just recently received a grant from SANDAG to do some community mobility planning. So we've identified four areas to be able to connect to those mobility hubs. And then I will turn it over to Rami Tani. You are Rami, thank you. That had to happen. So good afternoon, everybody. Rami Telly with uh, Planning and Development Services. I'm the deputy director there working with Planet over long range planning, as well as sustainability planning. So in addition to some of the projects that Lynette had identified, we're also updating our climate action plan, as well as working on a regional decarbonization framework. Up next is the city of Del Mar, and that's Karen Brindley or Clem Brown. Good afternoon, so, good, ap good oh, afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. No, Karen, I defer to you. <laughs> okay, I'm Karen Brindley, Planning and Community Development Director with the City of Del Mar. And with us today is our uh, Interim Assistant City Manager, Clem Brown. He's the alternate uh, for this um, working group. And I'll have him speak to the sustainable uh, efforts that we're undertaking. Uh, for Del Mar, we are still 
uh, actively working on getting our housing elements certified, just as many of your uh, of our colleagues are. So that's our primary focus. Uh, we've got a lot of other things in the hopper, but uh, the priority for us is to get through uh, the certification process with our housing element. And Clem? Yeah, I'll just mention briefly, thank you, Karen, that one of the things that Del Mar is looking at right now is a building electrification ordinance. So we'll be interested in hopefully talking about that topic with this working group. Thank you. Up next is the city of El Cajon, and that's Noah Alvey or Mike Vigiloni. Apologies on that. Oh, no worries. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, Noah Alvey, city of El Cajon. I'm the deputy director for community development. Um, in El Cajon right now, as with a lot of the other jurisdictions, we're still wrapping up our housing element, um, and we are actively working on some objective uh, design guidelines as well. Uh, but those are the two main things that uh, El Cajon's working on. Good to see everyone. Uh, up next is the city of Encinitas. I'm not sure if the city of Encinitas is present here today. I don't believe so, but if not, we'll go over to the city of Encinitas. Imperial Beach, and that is Tyler Boats or me again, Openshaw. Element is certified, but we're working on it. Uh, Tyler, I believe you're cutting off or you're muted. Tyler, I can't hear you through um, the Zoom meeting. Um, I can hear you through the wall, though. <laughs> Go for it, Megan. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Megan Openshaw. I'm with the City of Imperial Beach. Um, I'm a, yeah, so some of the projects that we've been working on ongoing have been our general plan local coastal program update. In addition to that, we do have some larger projects. That includes our 9th Street Improvement Project, which we're looking to incorporate some green infrastructure, some traffic calming solutions as well. And we're also working on our Bayshore Bikeway Resiliency Project, and that's where we're looking to retrofit an existing 1.2 mile segment of the Bayshore Bikeway into a coastal resilience corridor. Um, so that would also incorporate elements of living levees as well as sea level rise adaptation. Um, so those are some of the big items that we've been working on, but glad to be here. The city of La Mesa is absent. The city of Lemon Grove is absent, I believe. And up next is the city of National City, and that is Angelita Palma or Carlos Aguirre. Yeah. Hi, uh, my name is Angelita. I am uh, located in the uh, with the Housing Authority. Uh, we have just finished our housing element, and we are working on our complete communities um, safety element and climate action plan. Thank you. Um, up next is the city of Oceanside, and that is Sergio Madera or Darlene Nicarando. Hi, this is uh, Sergio Madera. I'm the city planner uh, for the city of Oceanside. We're current, currently working on a host of uh, efforts uh, related to sustainability, including updating a comprehensive update to our general plan, which includes a smart and sustainable corridor specific plan that uh, will focus uh, future development in our major east-west uh, transit corridors. Um, uh, we're also working on finalizing our housing element. Uh, we've gotten back our second round of comments and we're still um, AB, uh, oh, I forgot the name of the bill, but uh, the, the, the rezonings are the major reason why we can't um, get our housing element certified. So we'd be taken on that effort, but it's a little bit uh, difficult for us because since we're in the process of updating our general plan, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to do a bunch of rezonings right now until the general plan is updated. So some of the so some of the challenges that we're facing here in the city, but we are working on a number of um, exciting projects and we're uh, really ready to move forward with them. Um, up next is the city of Poway, and that's David DeVries or Bob Manis. Hello, everyone. How's everyone doing? David DeVries, city planner with the city of Poway. So some of our major sustainability efforts would be along the Poway Road corridor with our Poway Road specific plan. And we have 
a lot of new housing units going on there. If, if you haven't been here lately, uh, cruise on Highway Road. It's uh, exciting to see what's happening. So there's uh, that corridor that's experiencing a lot of new development. There's a uh, bus stops along Poway Road too. That's our, our transit in Poway. And then we also uh, have been participating a lot with the comprehensive multimodal corridor plan for San Vicente along the Highway 67. And I gotta say, this has been one of the most uh, uh, exciting projects that I've seen in uh, the East County region in a while. And, and uh, the proposal right now includes a, a lot of uh, trails and, and bikeways along the 67 corridor. And, you know, with uh, a lot of different hiking opportunities up there, I, I think it's gonna become a, a nice new regional destination. So some exciting stuff there. Although Poway is only partially involved, it, it's a lot of fun to see the planning going on with, with that one. And then uh, updating the safety element and close to getting the housing element certified. So nice to uh, see everyone here. Thanks. Up next is the city of San Diego. That is Heidi Von Bloom or Alyssa Mudo. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Heidi Von Bloom. I'm the planning director for the city of San Diego. Um, we have a few things going on um, in our uh, planning department and then our sustainability department also is in the process of uh, bringing forward an updated climate action plan uh, to our city council, which uh, we anticipate to be heard on August 2nd. Um, some other uh, big things um, that we have going on is we have an initiative called Blueprint San Diego, uh, which includes uh, significant amendments to our general plan um, to uh, incorporate our climate strategies um, and really focus um, uh, our development uh, located in the areas closest to transit and really working uh, to identify uh, the areas with the highest propensity to increase transit usage. Uh, we also have a number of community plan updates um, going on. Um, and then um, coming up uh, more in the near future, we have our Build Better San Diego initiative, which is a reform of our development impact fees to align with our climate goals as well. Um, and then we have a new housing action package um, that we will be um, engaging in public outreach in the coming weeks. Um, targeted to take that to city council in late spring of next year. And then just a couple of other items uh, that we have going on is uh, we received grant funding for coastal resilience master plan, building off our climate resiliency plan. And then uh, we're also um, kicking off our choice Creek watershed regional park master plan as well. Thank you. Up next is the city of Santee and that's Chris Jacobs or Michael Coyne. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Chris Jacobs at uh, CNT, trying to get my camera going here. Uh, Principal planner, uh, we are uh, working on the uh, housing element implementation, the rezoning effort. Michael Coyne, who's also tuned in here, is our uh, lead on that. And uh, we're working on a safety element update, and we have a budget for uh, an update to our climate action plan. So uh, a lot of uh, long range planning efforts here. Thank you. Up next is the city of Solana Beach and that's Joseph Lim or Corey Andrews. Hi, I'm Corey Andrews. I'm the alternate for this meeting. Joe Lim was unable to attend. Um, the city of Solana Beach is also working on um, getting the certification of our housing element. We're working on a safety element update and also building electrification codes. Thanks. Up next is the city of Vista, and that's John Conley or Patsy Chow. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, Patsy Chow over here, Deputy Director, City Planner, City of Vista. And uh, just recently, we actually resubmitted our housing element to HCD, hopefully addressing the last issue, as we were told by HCD staff. <laughs> so keep our fingers crossed and looking definitely for a final certification on that after two and a half years of working really hard on it like everybody else. Uh, so we're just, again, keeping our fingers, toes, everything crossed and get that final going. Uh, and we just started recently a uh, general plan update effort, um, had our meeting with the council, our first kickoff meeting with the city council, as well as uh, a tour with the consultants. So that's pretty exciting to get that going again. And um, takes, let's see where it takes us. Hopefully not a wholesale update, but definitely re revisiting some of the areas our corridors, uh, mixed use areas throughout the city that we wanted to kind of uh, take a look at it again. So that's it for Vista. Thank you very much. We are going to circle back to the city of Encinitas uh, and followed by 
our and then introduce our advisory members as well. Um, and for the city of Encinitas, that's Jennifer Gates or Crystal Najera. Thanks, Sam. I, uh, Jennifer could not attend today, so I'm attending as the alternate. I'm the sustainability sustainability manager for the city of Encinitas. And we are currently working on implementing our building electrification and other reach codes uh, for to meet our climate action plan goals. Uh, we are also uh, working on an EV charging station master plan and an update to our mobility elements and then about to launch our next five year cap update. Uh, and when Jennifer's here, she can update the group on what she's doing as it relates to housing. Thank you. Our first advisory member is the Air Pollution Control District. I believe they're absent today. So we're going to move on to our next oh, no, advisory member. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Hi, Apologies. Sam. I'm, I'm Mike Watt. I'm a deputy director here at the San Diego County Air Pollution Control District. I oversee our planning and rule development team, as well as a few other groups um, in our district. And um, just a couple quick updates. The team's currently working on an update to our regional air quality strategy document, which which will be um, taken to our board in a couple of weeks. Just some conceptual ideas and framework on that document. So that that's exciting, as well as um, implementing a number of incentive programs to try to um, encourage that transition from uh, mobile sources to zero and near zero uh, emission equipment. So excited about both of those efforts and look forward to uh, participating with this group. Thanks, everyone. Up next is Caltrans District 11, and that's Michelle Blake or Maurice Eaton. I believe Michelle's on. Go ahead, Michelle, if you're on. Um, my name is Michelle Blake. I am in charge of sustainability and climate action here at District 11. Um, I think the efforts that I'd like to highlight are the CMCPs, the Comprehensive Multimodal Corridor Plans. The city of Poway already briefly introduced one of them, but we're pretty excited to have a suite of, I believe, seven um, beginning or ongoing. And so um, many of you are probably involved in some capacity, at, um, one of those, um, but I think that's um, a, a key highlight to share with the group. And I'll hand it over to Maurice. Thanks, Michelle, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Maurice Eden with Caltrans District 11 Planning Division. I manage our development review branch and our travel modeling and forecasting branch. Uh, pleasure to be here. Up next is LACO, and that's Priscilla Allen Mumpower or Keen Simons. Hi, good afternoon. Um, thank you all. My name is Priscilla Mumpower. I'm an analyst too with San Diego County LAFCO. Um, some exciting things that I think are relevant to the group. Um, we are working on the SALK grant, which is the Sustainable Agricultural Lands Conservation Grant. This is in um, collaboration with the RCD of Greater San Diego County. Um, we were awarded the grant back in um, 2021. Um, or December 2020, and then we started work in June of um, 2021 and extending through June of 2023. It's been a really great year working on this grant. We've um, really collected some um, great uh, information from the agricultural community, um, and so we're excited to see what we come up with uh, when we start finalizing a um, or putting together the final report in June of 2023. And then um, furthermore, we are also working on municipal service reviews. As you um, all probably know, um, we're right now working through the Carlsbad and Oceanside Municipal Service Review. We're finalizing um, a uh, addendum to the Municipal Service Review for City of Escondido. Um, and then we'll start making our way through um, San Marcos, as well as the Encinitas region. Um, so that's that's what we have going on. Um, thank you for having me. Up next is North County Transit District, and that's Lillian Do Doherty or Katie Persons. They might be upset. Up next is MTS. I believe that they might not have a representative here. Up next is the Airport Authority District, and that's Brendan Reed or Ralph Redman. Yes. Um, good. Good afternoon, and and first, you know, thank you to Sandag for inviting the Airport Authority um, to be an advisory member on this role. 
Um, the airport authority, we have three main um, responsibilities. We uh, are in charge of planning for the region's long-term long air transportation needs, um, operating the San Diego International Airport, and serving as the Airport Land Use Commission. And I know we've intersected with a lot of the jurisdictions on the, on the um, call today through, through those roles. Um, I think for um, as far as the sustainable communities working groups, some of the items to highlight that's happening here. Um, we're in the midst of uh, building our new Terminal 1, which um, is very exciting, but it certainly will be painful for a few years uh, as we do have some massive construction. So um, at the end of the day, uh, the new terminal will be uh, have a, really a, a large number of sustainability and resiliency design elements um, that'll be a, a showcase for the region, greatly expanding EV charging, um, stormwater capture and reuse, uh, sea level resilience through year 2100, and et cetera. So we're really excited about that. And then we continue as part of that to work with Sandag, MTS, and others on um, developing a some sort of fixed rail transit connection to the airport. And there's a lot of great momentum around that. And it, again, would be exciting for the region. Um, and then Another item I wanted to bring up to this group is that we have a joint grant with Sandag um, to develop an advanced air mobility regional strategy. So this is looking at how as a region we can integrate emerging aviation technologies like electric vehicle takeoff and landing, the, the Uber Airs uh, in the future. Uh, and it certainly has a aviation component, an airspace component, but also as a land use component, as we work with jurisdictions on, you know, what are best practices uh, for citing Verta ports into the future. So thank you again for having me. Up next is the Water Authority, and I do not believe they are present today. But, um, we're going to go over to the Port of San Diego, and that's Heather Cramp or Walden Kicker. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Heather Cramp. I'm a senior environmental specialist with the Planning and Environment Division at the Port of San Diego. Uh, some projects that the, the port is working on uh, related to sustainability are uh, we're nearing the end of our port master plan update. Uh, we just approved our maritime clean air strategy uh, and we have several uh, blue economy projects uh, and nature-based solutions projects focused on coastal resiliency uh, and water quality. Um, and uh, probably one of the, the biggest projects that I'm working on right now is our Chula Vista Bayfront redevelopment, which is sort of balancing uh, uh, development projects with coastal restoration and uh, public access and recreation opportunities. So uh, happy to be here and uh, looking forward to uh, participating in this group. Thank you. Up next would be the Southern California Tribal Chairman's Association, but I believe they are not here. And we will be circling back to the city of San Marcos. Apologies. And that is Saima or Joe Fracci. Thank you so much. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Simon Kreshi. I'm representing City of San Marcos. I'm the principal planner here at the city and sustainability programs manager. Uh, the main project that the city is working on is updating the general plan. It's a comprehensive uh, update, so it's very sustainability focused. Um, we are uh, in the process of working on land use element environmental justice uh, element and also open space conservation. So a lot of sustainability related work um, is um, taking place at the city. We're also working on implementing a couple of measures that came out of our climate action plan. And one of those is the TDM ordinance, um, which we hope to take to our council by the end of this year. So those are the major ones. Thank you. Before I move on and pass it back to Antoinette, did I skip over anyone or is there anyone that would like to introduce themselves from a member agency? Seeing none, I'll pass it back to Antoinette. Thank you very much, Sam. This is this is really an incredible um, working group and I feel really inspired and excited by all of the great projects that you are working on and that you shared with us today. Um, I 
can tell that housing is top of mind for many of you. Um, and so um, I'm glad that housing is uh, the main item on the, uh, the agenda today. Also really happy to hear that many of you are working on electrification and EV charging infrastructure. And I think that's something that we'll be um, addressing um, this fall with this group as well. Um, so a lot of timely projects that you're working on that are also you know, major regional priorities. Um, with that, I wanna move on to the second part of this agenda item, which is going over the work plan. So that's something new that we introduced as part of the working group restructuring was working collaboratively with the working group members to develop um, a work plan um, for the year sort of our roadmap, if you will, um, for the different topics that you want to discuss. This is this is your forum for collaboration and coordination. We want to make sure that the information that we're bringing forward is useful, relevant, helpful to you. Um, so I'm going to hand it over to um, Allison Wood to review the work plan and get some input and feedback from you all. Great, thank you, Antoinette. Um, we can go ahead and go on to the next slide. So I did just want to put up our um, committee structure here briefly before we get into the working plan um, topics. You can see where the Sustainable Communities Working Group fits in with the broader SANDAG structure. So you can see the Sustainable Communities Working Group reports into the Regional Planning Committee along with a few other working groups. So we have social equity, shoreline preservation, military, um, and then you can see how our mobility working group, the other new working group, reports into the transportation committee. So we can go ahead to the next slide. Okay, so the um, draft work plan, this is something we um, discussed with the technical working group, the TWIG, um, earlier this year. So some of it should seem familiar, um, but this is a draft and open to discussion today. Um, we've identified four main categories here for the work plan. Uh, the first around land use and housing, um, and this includes updates and discussion on our housing acceleration program, which includes the REAP um, funding that SANDAG receives from the state and how we spend those dollars. Uh, the Series 15 regional growth forecast and land use pattern that'll inform the next update of the regional plan, and other mobility hub planning and collaboration. Um, with habitat conservation, as part of the working group reorganization, our environmental mitigation program working group um, is transitioning to a task force. And so um, efforts related to habitat conservation may uh, arise to this working group from time to time. So we've included a place here for updates on the environmental mitigation program. We also... Um, SANDAG undertook recently a carbon storage and sequestration study, and it sounds like some of the efforts um, underway at LAFCO might also be relevant in this um, work plan area. Um, on climate action and resilience, there's um, a number of efforts going on in this group related to climate action planning and electric vehicle efforts. Um, and then finally, the last category is more general around funding and legislation. So we heard from a lot of working group members that that's a really important area of value that you get from the working group is being able to discuss and work together on implementation of new laws and regulations and staying up to date on those efforts. Um, maybe I'll go to the next slide and then we can open it up for discussion. So I wanted to um, make sure everyone was aware of some other related groups and task forces um, that relate to the Sustainable Communities Working Group. So these are groups where we may get into more technical discussions um, than what we get into at the working group level and may involve other staff from your jurisdictions or other agencies and entities um, around the region to collaborate on, on these topics. So the first here um, is our HAP technical assistance convening. So earlier this month, we um, sent out a survey to all the local jurisdictions to get um, a contact list established for all of your key housing um, staff at your jurisdictions. And so we'll use that contact list to convene housing staff um, as we deploy technical assistance resources um, through our, our HAP efforts. Uh, we also talked about with the TWIG earlier this year, establishing a task force around our regional growth forecast and land use pattern. So we have um, um, put together a list. We also you know, asked for volunteers to participate in that task force. So we do have a list um, 
established for that. And we'll be getting that group going later this year um, within the next couple months to really start working on um, series 15 to inform the next update of the regional plan. Um, we have a regional habitat conservation task force. So this kind of replaces the EMP working group. And then we have our recap stakeholder group that I think many of you have participated in. This is a group that's met um, about twice a year for the last several years to coordinate on our climate action planning um, program. And then finally, we have the Accelerate to Zero Emissions Collaborative that I know a number of you are also involved in, um, where SANDAG you know, works with other entities across the region to coordinate on electric vehicle efforts. So those are the, the slides we had prepared on the, the work plan and the other groups related to the Sustainable Communities Working Group. So um, I'll turn it back to you, Antoinette, to get some input from working group members. And we can go back to the work, work plan slide um, if needed, if we wanna facilitate discussion on that one. Yeah, let's go back to the work plan slide and um, I will look for raised hands from members who'd like to comment. Lynette, I see your hand up. Go ahead. So I have a question, Allison, for the task force, the Series 15 Land Use Pattern Task Force, and then for the points of contact for, mm -hmm. say, the HAP technical assistance. Can we have a list of folks with those names so we can just yeah. ensure if there's anyone else or there's been some shifts here at the county, mm -hmm. as well as I know with direction related to the updated regional plan? Yes, we will get that list out. We just just got all the contacts established in the last couple of weeks. So we'll send that around, um, make sure it looks good to everyone. And, you know, one of the benefits with having these other task forces is that they can change more easily as as staff come and go um, and add. We can add more more people as needed, too. So I'll definitely share that with the group. Thanks. Thank you, Lynette. Eric, I see your hand up. Go ahead. Great, thank you. Um, so uh, my comments are also on the Series 15 um, group, and, and I guess it's it's really just an ask uh, of Sandag to really be transparent in in what feedback you want and how that feedback is going to be used as Series 15 is developed. I, I don't we, we don't need to, to rehash everything before, but it, it really was. I was in series 14 in multiple jurisdictions and we provided a lot of feedback and, and specifically in Carlsbad um, and then we didn't see that resulted in series 14 and, and ended up providing comment letters on that. So I think early and often it would be helpful to be transparent in, in what feedback you want and what is going to be taken and what is not going to be taken as that is being developed uh, because now we're in a situation of, of changing series 14 so we can use it for our planning efforts. Understood, we hear you, Eric, and I think this task force approach will help with that quite a bit. Other questions, comments from the, the working group members? All right, well, maybe, maybe is, are these topics that are of interest to folks? Um, are, did, we, did we get it right? Did we hear you right? Um, maybe just a show of hands if you concur with the work plan. If you know how to use your raise hand, good, Heidi. Thank you. <laughs> All right, awesome. I'm seeing more raised hands here, so it looks like, and, and a thumbs up. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so it looks like um, we're off to a good start then. And this is a living document, so we'll revisit it. Um, new topics come up throughout the course of the year um, and feel free to reach out to us uh, with ideas that you have at any point in time, um, because this is certainly not set in stone. Um, okay, are there, I, we've taken member comments. If there are no more member comments, we can move to comments from members of the public that wish to speak. Um, Sam, can you let me know if we have any members of the public with their hands raised? I do not see any. Okie doke, then we can move on to item three. So item three is the regional early action planning grants. 
um, of 2021, or REAP 2.0 as we call it, and Allison Wood from Sandag, as well as Tara Lake from our consultant helping us with this, WSP, um, will be um, giving a, uh, an update on the REAP 2.0 program and then leading a discussion on the public engagement plan to support REAP 2.0. So Allison, go ahead and kick this off, please. Great, thank you. We can go ahead and go into the next slide here. Um, so we're really excited about the REAP 2.0 funding opportunity and how it can really expand the work we've been doing through our housing acceleration program. I wanted to put up our timeline of um, where we've been with the housing program um, to date over the last couple of years. Uh, so the board adopted the RENA plan back in 2020. Um, around the same time, Sandag received funding through the REAP 1.0 program, so about $6.8 million that we've used to jumpstart our housing acceleration program here at Sandag. A big part of that was um, a call for projects that we released in November of 2021 for local jurisdictions. Um, around the same time, our board adopted the 2021 regional plan, and that included a number of strategies and implementation actions um, focused on housing and for Sandag to really um, elevate our role in housing and supporting all of you with your efforts. And in March of 2022 is when the successful grants were awarded. We awarded grants to seven jurisdictions and about $1.9 million were awarded. And now we're getting ready for REAP 2.0. So we have a lot more money coming from the state. $43 million has been allocated to Sandag for this program. We can go ahead to the next slide. So just wanted to really paint the picture on the, the difference between these two funding sources. Um, with REAP 1.0, again, that allocation to Sandag was about $6.8 million. The focus was really on housing, planning, and RENA implementation. The timeline here originally was for the funding to end in December of 2023. Um, the budget bill that was just passed by the legislature actually extended that by a year through 2024. And that applies for all of the LEAP um, local funding that you all may be using as well. So hopefully you've all heard that news um, that we have a little bit more time um, to spend that state funding. For REAP 2.0, as I mentioned, $43 million coming to Sandag. The focus for this program, um, there's still a strong focus on housing, but the state is looking for really transformational planning and implementation um, that brings together housing, climate, equity, uh, VMT reduction, and also addresses negative economic impacts of COVID. And the timing for this funding um, is through June of 2026 is when funding needs to be spent. Now, I will mention that um, this is based on draft program gui guidelines that we've seen from HCD. We are expecting the final guidelines any, any day now. Um, and we're also um, under the impression that a significant portion of the funding that was going to be coming uh, from the federal government by a COVID relief funds is going to be swapped with state funding, which is good news for us. It gives us a lot more flexibility in how we spend um, this funding. And so we may see a little bit less focus on impacts of COVID and more focus on integrated housing and transportation and equity type um, projects. So we'll, we'll be watching closely for that. Okay, next slide. So to give you a sense for some of the activities that we've been doing and you know ways we can perhaps build upon some of these is what we wanna get some initial feedback on today. Um, through our initial REAP 1.0 activities through HAP, we've done these three categories of programs, local jurisdiction support, data analysis and policy resources, and then regional initiatives. So we've done the grant programs. Um, we're getting our technical assistance up and running. We're working to procure a consultant for that as we speak. Um, we have our sustainable communities on call available. And I know many of you are looking into using that bench of consultants for your HAP grant awards, which is really great. Um, on the data analysis and policy side, we are we just got a consultant on board to develop our housing policy and planning tool and our anti-displacement study will be kicking off here shortly as well within the next couple months. 
And then our pro housing best practices report that's been completed and that's that one is up on our website and many of you contributed to that through the interviews that we did. Um, and then on the regional initiatives, we have the Housing Policy Leadership Academy that kicked off earlier this year, the housing policy forums um, that Sam spoke about, our next one coming up in August. Um, the housing acceleration program strategy is something that we've been working on with the regional equitable housing subcommittee of the board, and that is um, should be wrapping up later this year as well. And then capital mapping is our, our kind of development pipeline work where we've um, been asking for information from developers about projects that are in their pipeline um, and ways that we can help connect them to um, competitive state grant opportunities. So these are some of the things we've been doing. Um, we realize with funding from REAP 2.0, we can do a lot more and we're excited about being able to spend more money on capital projects as well. Um, through the new funding. Um, so we can um, go ahead and go on to the next slide and we'll talk more about REAP 2.0. Okay. So the timeline for REAP 2.0, um, the program was established earlier this year. We kicked off our outreach and education work in February. Many of you attended a, a joint working group forum that we held specifically on REAP 2.0. We've been um, you know, wait, waiting for final guidelines from HCD to really dig into the priorities and exactly what we want this program to look like. So we're now at the point where we should have those final guidelines this month, and then we can really um, work into developing our program. So SANDAG did apply for our 10% our advance in May. That hasn't been approved yet with HCD, but I think we're close. And then through the rest of the year, we're going to be working really closely with you all to develop our program framework. So really identify what this program is going to look like and how we're going to spend um, those dollars. Simultaneously, we'll be working on the next call for projects um, through HAP that'll release um, a lot of the REAP dollars to local jurisdictions. And we'll talk more about that in the next agenda item. And we have a deadline of December to submit our application to the state for the program. So it's a lot of work to do in a, a short amount of time before the end of the year. Okay, next slide. So these are the REAP 2.0 program objectives. Um, I think I've covered most of these, but again, you know, a focus on accelerating infill development, affirmatively furthering fair housing, reducing VMT, and addressing economic impacts of COVID. I think very much aligns with what we're trying to do in our regional plan and what you all are doing in your, your housing elements as well. Next slide. So the proposed uses. So um, these are the types of work efforts that we can fund with REAP 2.0. So, you know, administration, of course, is part of this, education and outreach is a, a significant portion of this. The state really wants us engaging communities um, throughout the process. Sub allocations um, are a big part of this as well. We fully intend to make available a large portion of the REAP 2.0 funding to um, the eligible sub um, applicants. So local jurisdictions, we envision planning and capital grants um, being available to local jurisdictions. Transit agencies are eligible. Um, and in prior discussions, we've heard a lot of interest in a regional housing trust fund. Um, so we could potentially um, use some of this funding to support a regional housing trust fund that then could support um, developers in the region as well. And then um, to complement that, we can use the REAP 2.0 funding on various regional initiatives. So this aligns with what we've been doing through um, the HAP program to date. So things like technical assistance, um, data resources, planning studies, um, and this can also be studies that implement our regional plan. And then continuing our work on the development pipeline and establishing partnerships, we're looking at ways that we can do more, especially in um, support of the affordable housing and sustainable communities program, um, so that we can make sure our region is more competitive in those programs. So supporting collaboration with um, partners on that. Okay. Next slide. 
so this is really the overview of what's to come for REAP 2.0. Uh, as I mentioned, we'll be doing significant outreach and engagement over the next several months, um, using that input to refine our priorities and the proposed uses of our funding and developing that REAP 2.0 program framework that then we can make available and, and get feedback on. Um, at the same time, preparing the call for projects and submitting our REAP 2.0 application at the end of the year. So um, before I hand things over to WSP, maybe we can go back to the last slide and just, I'd like to open it up for any um, initial comments or thoughts from the group on proposed uses or things that we should be sure to consider and think about as we um, further develop the program. And then next we'll talk specifically about education and outreach. So maybe with that, I'll hand it back to Antoinette um, to help see if there's any comments at this point. Thank you, Allison. Um, looking for raised hands. We definitely want to hear from you. Tyler. Let's see if my mic works. Can this also be used for complete streets? I saw that there was something about reducing VMTs. I'm wondering if that overlaps with ATP or anything like that. Yes, um, the the draft guidelines call out um, active transportation infrastructure and Vision Zero um, plans and policies and projects. Um, they do specify having a, a close tie to infill development. Um, so we'll see if that changes at all in the final guidelines. But yes, we I I would say that that could um, fit in here as well. Um, what about land acquisition? to create parks or something along those lines to help reduce VMTs? Yeah, that's called out as well. So that's that's great. Is that something, if I could just ask you, Tyler, for your thoughts, if, is that something, mm -hmm. you know, the city may be interested in pursuing a grant application around? Is that what you're thinking, if we made um, funding available? Yeah, there's a certain s section of our town that's underserved and has no parks at all. Um, mm -hmm. So that's definitely something we'd be interested in. Okay, great. Okay, other comments, input. We definitely want to hear from you. This is a significant investment in you know, housing and, and related amenities, um, and we want it to support you and your initiative. So please speak up and provide input. Um, let us know if we are um, on track, if the plan looks like it's going to you know, be beneficial to all of you. If there's specific things you want to see in the grant program, like Tyler mentioned, uh, including parks and complete streets, concerns, challenges. <laughs> I know we've heard from many of you that there's capacity issues and, and you know, applying for grants right now is challenging. We want to hear those things too. Oh, good, Heidi. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to keep talking until people raise their hand. <laughs> um, well, since nobody else is talking, I, I, I do have just a couple of things. And I was going to mention that as well, that, you know, that the grant capacity is really, really hard and challenging for us. I know that we're not the only ones that just has just been decimated staffing wise. Um, yeah. Our vacancy rate is really high. Um, and so, you know, sort of the more streamlined, you know, that we could get, you know, with the, the grant requirements, the more helpful that is. Um, and then, um, you know, obviously just the same comments as always, the more flexibility that we have um, to be able to tailor um, what we may already have on our work program um, towards um, those items. Those are things that really help us, um, you know, move the items that we have forward. So, you know, Antoinette, I know that we were also gonna, I think we have separately have a meeting to go over our work program as well. Um, but, you know, we really do try to make sure that each of our items, you know, kind of hit all of the key things that, you know, this group is, you know, gonna be looking for. Um, but really kind of just maybe like a little bit of flexibility, um, you know, in the requirements that maybe not each initiative, you know, solves the entirety of a problem, but is, you know, recognizes, you know, its ability to incrementally, you know, get us forward towards progress, especially considering the staffing capacity uh, challenges that we have now. Yeah, we, we hear that. We're so happy to get the news last week that the general funds were going to be used instead of the federal funds because we were really concerned about the usefulness of the funding with all of the strings attached. 
Um, and so I think this will really help to, we, well, we don't have the exact guidelines, but I think this will really, um, you know, help to provide the flexibility. Um, that yeah, and then also, you know, I know that there was, you know, another comment about this as well, but, you know, we're really focused on, you know, all of our, you know, housing policy in particular, but there's a lot of things that go along with that that are necessary to support the new housing that we are planning for. Um, so, you know, really kind of focusing not just on, you know, the housing programs, um, you know, and their potential to be consistent with climate goals, et cetera, but really focusing on other kind of neighborhood serving community benefits uh, type programs that we can use, you know, to sort of leverage um, support for additional density. Thank you. I see we had a comment in the chat from Lynette about capacity also being a challenge for the, the county. And are there things that we can do to help you all with those capacity issues using this funding? Do you have any creative ideas there for, you know, how we can assist and support you all in these challenging times? Heidi was, um, you know, to echo what she was saying, the streamlining is really important. So as streamlined as possible. And then also on the administrative side, if we're not required to, um, I know we recently had a grant that we could have approved at our director level versus you requiring a resolution of the board. And that type of thing is also very helpful because that takes a lot of resources and staffing to even just get that done. So those types of things as administrative and, you know, um, less hurdles administratively and streamlining the process would be very helpful. Allison may have mentioned this, but I think it's important, so I'll mention it again. Um, we've established, you know, a consultant bench that you all can tap into. So we've done the procurement in such a way that um, you can access those consultants as well. So hopefully that could be potentially beneficial to you too, in terms of bringing some additional technical um, capacity um, to your jurisdictions. Other thoughts and ideas? Maybe I'll just throw out one other question, Antoinette, that um you know if if even if grants just administering grants are i understand that's a lot of work are there other things that sandag could take on studies that we could complete or work we could do on your behalf that where we do it in such a way that you're very much involved and can benefit from the process but we could um perhaps take on a little bit more of the heavy lifting if there's any topics that maybe come to mind in that realm um you know, we've had some success with that model for the climate action planning work. And I'm wondering if if folks have any other examples, you know, if we can learn from the successes of that of that work and apply it. Crystal, I saw your can't open oh, your hands up now too. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking, Allison. That was really helpful five years ago when you supported the cap updates. Um, that was substantial. And um, now having to do it on our own this time around has been real challenging. So something like that would be fantastic. Any other thoughts uh, or ideas uh, about how the funding can be used to really help you advance your housing programs? Okay, if we don't have any other questions or comments is that the is that is that the end of the presentation Allison are we ready to take public comments we're um we have a few more slides from WSP and um and we will have a an exercise with Mentimeter so um get ready for that I know you folks are familiar with that we've used it in other meetings um if we can get the slides there we go and I'll hand things over to Tara Lake great thank you um, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Tara Lake with WSP, Assistant Vice President and uh, Head of our Planning Group for Southern California and Nevada. Um, next slide, please. So we're kicking off the public engagement plan for REAP 2.0. Um, so this will be incorporated into the final application. Um, it will help to identify those important partnership opportunities. Um, and of course, it will also help to establish those very important priorities um, to achieve those transform transformative planning um, and implementation items. Um, and we have to do this all while, of course, balancing both jurisdictional um, and regional needs. Next slide, please. 
So we're going to build upon you know, information that we've already received. Um, as Allison mentioned, that there was a working group earlier in the year. Um, we also did some outreach uh, during the 1.0 process as well. That will help us. Um, and we're going to employ a variety of methods to, to reach a wide range of stakeholders. Um, so we're going to be reaching out to under-resourced communities, communities of concern, environmental justice communities, uh, disadvantaged communities, and tribal communities. Um, we have a, a, a CBO uh, focus group that's going to be coming up here shortly. Uh, next slide, please. So there's a lot of text on this screen, um, but there are a lot of potential uh, stakeholders. So um, I'm not going to read them all off, but please take a moment and, and look over that and um, and please let us know if there's ones that we've missed, um, others that, that, that you want to recommend. And I don't know if Antoinette, if you want uh, folks to go off mute now and, and mention others. I am happy to have folks go off and weigh in on this right now. No need to raise your hand, just speak up. I know it's a long list, so we'll give you a minute to absorb it, take it in. And you can also provide a comment in the chat, I think. This is Michelle. Oh, oh sorry. great. Thank you, Michelle. Go ahead. Um, yeah, um, I'm trying to look. I know that there's a long list. Maybe I'm overlooking it, but are any educational? Oh, yeah. Educational community and institutions that we are. Okay. I was looking for schools, but I think I was over in the S category instead of E's. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Thank you. Good point. Well, if there's not any others, we'll let you maybe absorb that too. And you, of course, can. Um, emails anytime, but also maybe during the Mentimeter, you can also uh, mention some more there. So we have the next slide, please. So not quite as long of a list, but some here are some draft engagement methods. Um, you know, we really wanna try some different techniques and innovative techniques and to really reach all those groups that we were mentioning. Um, so also please take a look at these and let us know if there's others that you recommend, if there's others that you're finding that are working well in your communities um, that you would like us to use or suggest, please let us know. Any feedback or input on the engagement methods? Just go ahead and speak up if you do have ideas. I think um, one tool that might be really useful and a great opportunity to utilize um, is the new release climate equity guidance that Sandag just completed. Um, I know that each agency is probably going to grapple with how to appropriately conduct um, climate equity outreach. And so um, maybe this is a good opportunity to employ that and um, utilize any of the tools that were developed there. Great, thank you. Rami left a comment in the um, chat about small facilitated workshops as well. So that's good feedback. Yeah, I agree with that. We sometimes get a lot more feedback and interaction in the small groups. All right, well, thank you. If you have any more, please let us know um, afterwards. Next slide. All right, so at this point, we're gonna switch over to Megan's Mentimeter. So Megan, you wouldn't mind sharing your screen? Yes, if I can be made a co-host so I can share that. Uh, Megan, as a panelist, you should be able to take the screen now. I've taken it down. OK, thank you. Great, so hopefully you've all used Mentimeter before, at least on my screen, let's see if I can close this, yeah. Um, so at the top, you can see, uh, go to menti.com and use that code and it should work on your phone or your, or your computer. It'll give people a few minutes to get on. Uh, but the first question is how should Sandag engage stakeholders uh, throughout the REAP 2.0 process? And who should we be engaging and how should we be engaging with these groups? So if you could just type in your responses and then they'll, they'll pop up here. Mm -hmm. 
And just give a shout out if you're having any challenges with accessing Menti. Let's see, builders and community groups, social media outlets, and social media, next door, use next door for good, uh, renters. And to point out too, this really is through, throughout the REAP 2.0 process, not just leading up to the application, but as, as it continues community members and groups presenting at local jurisdictions and council meeting. Maybe I can just add Tara for folks mm -hmm. to think about too. Um, we know you all have a lot of outreach and education going on too. So if there are ways we can partner with you so that we're you know, not doubling up on the same people, we can work collaboratively. Be interested in any ideas around that too. Are there more coming in, Megan? Does it scroll? <laughs> All right, send the information to us and we'll share, definitely. TikTok, we'll have to learn how to use TikTok. I knew I wasn't gonna get away with it. Anything with food. Yes, so I miss being in person. Cross coordination amongst the agency PIOs. Great. Should we move on to the next one? Get out into the community, all right. So how should REAP funds be leveraged to make the biggest impact? So kind of getting a little bit more to what Allison uh, was, was asking during her presentation, but uh, yeah, maybe thinking about in terms of what's, what's priority, what really can make the biggest impact to your jurisdiction or to the region. Don't be shy. And as we point out, it can be used for um, mobility planning that, that really you know, ties that nexus to housing. Prioritize programs that will serve the most people, land acquisition. Climate resilience. Make available to cities to assist affordable housing developers, programs that can incorporate quick impact projects to communities that will support housing, transit accessibility and efficiency, fund shovel ready projects related to housing. Great, well, thanks for these ideas and you know anything too that'll help you implement your housing elements as you're finishing those those up. Stay away from studies, question mark. Fund land use plan updates to encourage mixed use development, TODs, support infill and transit connected adjacent density. EV infrastructure, consideration of the fact that existing established communities may not have access to multimodal transportation options. Okay. 
fun planning or building as needed, no match is preferred, increased capacity. Great, all right, thank you. I think I could go on to the next one, Megan. So help spread the word. What other organizations or outreach efforts are you involved in where these efforts could create synergy? It's kind of to Allison's uh, question earlier. As we all know, our constituents get uh, planning fatigue, meeting fatigue, climate collaborative, San Diego Foundation, it's a good one. Realtors. Any others? No, this is kind of a tricky one. But if you do think of any others, uh, please let us know. California Statewide Communities Development Authority. The county has established working group meetings with several stakeholder groups that may be an opportunity for SANDAG to present. Mm -hmm. AB 617 Community Steering Committees. Great, well, thank you for those. Building Industry Association. I think we just had one last slide, but it was just basically saying our our next steps. Um, and we're we're going to contact all of you and and ask you if you, if you could send us a list of well, we're going to send you a draft list of CBOs and let us know um, if if there's any others um, that your your jurisdiction or organization uh, would like us to include any any comments um, and there there's Megan's uh, email address she is the project manager for the public engagement plan helping uh, Sandag so please send her any additional comments thank you everybody all right thank you Tara um, are there any other member comments before we go to public comments on this item okay Seeing none, Sam, are there any members of the public that have their hand raised and would like to speak on this item? I do not see any hands at this time. All right, then I think we can um, move on to the next item, also a housing uh, topic. This is the Housing Acceleration Program Grants 2.0. Um, and Stacy Cooper is going to be um, presenting this item. Stacy, are you ready? I'm ready. All right. All right, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Stacy Cooper, Senior Regional Planner here at Sandag, working the Sustainable Communities Group, um, primarily on housing. And I wanna talk a little bit about one of the elements that Allison had mentioned in the program development, and that's sub-allocation. We'll be putting together a competitive call for projects for the jurisdictions. We wanna get some feedback from you guys on what you think would be the most helpful. Um, next slide. All right, so here's our tentative timeline. Um, we are still, as we mentioned, waiting on the final guidelines from HCD. We are hoping that those come out soon. We will come back to you guys in September for additional feedback once we've put together a little bit more of the call for projects. We're hoping to have that released um, in October with applications due in January. And then the expenditure deadline for the uh, call for projects is December 31st, 2025. Next slide, please. Um, general eligibility, the project has to be located in a mobility hub, transit priority area, or a tier one, two, or three employment center. Um, as Allison mentioned, the project accelerates infill development uh, and reduces VMT and advances equity. So each proposed use must be consistent with the objectives of the, of the REAP 2.0 program. As we know, we're still working on the draft guidelines. We do expect some changes in the final guidelines, but next slide, please. These are the current four objectives of the program. Um, I'm not gonna repeat it because Allison already went over it. So we can go on to the next slide for some eligible projects. So 
as of now, any type of planning project that is put forward has to include, as you can see there at the bottom, it has to include planning documents um, with a commitment to adapt and implement. We're not 100% sure what that means yet, but we're hoping that'll be cleared up in the, in the final guidelines. Again, increasing housing choice, supply and affordability. So here's some examples of things that were outlined in both the framework and the draft guidelines, and also some increased mobility options. One thing to be aware of is if more of the fed, more of the funds are federal than we're anticipating, some of these mobility options will not be eligible for that funding. Um, so just keep that in mind. But we're hoping, again, as we mentioned, that we're moving forward more with the general funds for more flexibility with the program. Um, next slide, please. Again, under the current draft guidelines that are tied to the uh, state and local fiscal recovery funds, which are the federal funds, there is for any capital expenditure that's over a million dollars requires a written justification. We're sort of hoping that we're moving away from that, but I just wanted to put in that caveat just so that we know moving forward and what that would mean is that we would need to just uh, submit additional paperwork with reporting that explained a little bit more about this project um, and how it fulfills the needs and it's appropriate for, um, for your jurisdiction. So again, here's some options that we have for capital projects, um, big on infrastructure and capital investments that increase affordable housing development. Um, and yeah, and again, same thing with the last one. If we're talking about mobility options, if it is tied to the federal funds, some of the transit improvement, uh, some of the transit improvement projects will not be applicable. Uh, next slide. And then opening it up to discussion, I'll pass it back to Antoinette, but keeping in mind uh, the program objectives and that they're looking for transformative planning and implementation projects, what type of things do you feel like would be most beneficial for your communities? What type of support would you need? Do you have ideas on the grant max and mins? And will your jurisdiction apply? So I will pass it back to Antoinette to ask and field some questions. Great job, Stacey, thank you. Um, okay, so um, chime in, please. This is your opportunity to help us shape a grant program for you. So we wanna hear from you. <laughs> what, what kind of projects do you need funding for? What would what will help uh, make this an easy grant application um, for you to apply for? We want we want to hear from you. Help us help you. <laughs> Any hands? Thank you, Karen. Go ahead. Okay, so I just have a question regarding the eligibility. Is it the same as HAP 1.0? So the, we are currently in the process of working through that. I think, so in our last meeting, well, the meeting with the TWIG, we had talked about changes to board policy 33 um, and whether or not it would have to be a current housing element. And there were there were a bunch of things like that. It looks like board policy 33 will not be moving forward to the board before this is released. So again, like we had to do with REAP 1.0, it looks like we'll be asking for an exception for that. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that as it just relates to the status of several jurisdictions, housing, element, housing yeah. elements. Yeah, we want to make this available to as many of you as we can. So we're not looking to kind of make that set in stone. As long as there's process being made and effort being made, um, we will make sure that, that you're eligible. Okay, and then uh, I see that on the general eligibility, the first uh, bullet point, is that it's got to be located within a mobility hub, transit priority area, or a, a tier one, two, or three employment center. I just want to make sure that, again, as it's structured, that they're through that criteria that we're not excluding jurisdictions because of just the, the you know nature of of our geographic location or community had, makeup. Yes, we had added in um, uh, employment tier three for that reason because not all the jurisdictions were eligible without that. Okay. Thank you. Lynette, go ahead. The county would, of course, echo that <laughs> just because by <laughs> nature of how the mobility hubs were established, just right up to the county jurisdictional boundary. Um, we are working with SANDAG on you know, alignment with connectivity and looking at other options to connect our folks into those mobility hubs. And as we've discussed um, with Sandbag staff, 
the boundaries of those mobility hubs are conceptual. So if there can be thought to that, if there are other ways that these communities are connecting into those mobility hubs, whether it's through the flexible fleet strategic plan uh, planning effort or other, other um, types of ways. Um, we've also um, provided SANDAG with some um, options for communities that are established with high populations that meet all of the characteristics of, you know, for a mobility hub, but weren't identified as such, i.e. Ramona, um, Fallbrook, that we would like to make sure that those aren't excluded from opportunities. That's good feedback. Thank you, Lynette. Heidi, I see your hand. Um, yeah, so your question on here is, will you apply? So I'll say yes. <laughs> um, to that one, um, but I do want to just, you know, for sort of, you know, general uh, planning processes, it says grant min max amounts. Do you have any, you know, and, and I don't know if I missed this and I apologize if I do, but do you have, you know, an estimate of what those would look like order of magnitude? So that's an item of discussion. Do you have any thoughts on that? Um, a little bit, it just in the sense that, you know, in the last round, you know, we're grateful for all the money we can get, obviously, um, but it really wasn't a significant amount to be able to get, you know, maybe something larger um, and a little bit more useful, not saying that our, our funding is not going to be useful, um, but, you know, we do have a lot of, you know, additional, I, I mean, I, I can think of like seven things that I have, you know, coming into the next, you know, one to three years that I would be looking to this funding for. But if it's you know limited to those smaller amounts, that significantly hinders our ability to get those off the ground. Do you have like a dollar amount in mind? Just I mean, we do have a lot more funding with Reap two than right. we did with right. one point oh, but we don't know right now how much of that's going to go to sub allocation and stuff like that. So any yeah. kind of that you can provide would be great. Yeah, and then the other you know the other question is, and I understand that this is you know sensitive, but. You know, we do serve a very significant amount of people um, within our city, and so you know, to have, you know, to to be limited the way that we were last time was very challenging. You know, for us, you know, overall as a large jurisdiction. Um, Lynette, I I think you raised your hand a second time, and it's not still up from before. Am I correct? I did. I thought all of right. something else. No. <laughs> well, first of all, are you applying, Lynette? We are. Okay, most great. <laughs> no. And thank you. You know, I want to say just thank you to your your grant staff. They are so helpful to us. And just uh, Terry and the team, they're just really wonderful to work with. Um, so thank you so much. I appreciate all of your efforts. Uh, one of the things I'm pinging my team as you're asking these questions because they're more the SMEs than I am on, on um, processing grant applications. But um, the feedback that I received was the actual application itself was a bit difficult. There was, um, it was difficult to use in the format. So I don't know if you've received other um, feedback related to that. Um, and then the, um, and we can talk offline about this, but I'm getting some information from the team that there were, um, there was a glitch in being able to use the on calls for some reason for us. So I can get a bit more information on that and share with you what that was, but it seemed to do with timing of the, the grant, um, the HAP grant and the, the consultant, maybe when oh. you're coming or something like that. So that may have been worked out. I know that that on-call program's new. So just some feedback from the team. Yeah, we do have the executed agreements with the on-call now. So that problem should be resolved. It may have been that we were in the process of negotiating those um, when you were trying to access them. But you raise a good point and I wanna make sure everybody knows. I know grant writing is tedious and we'll try to make it as simple as possible with whatever guidelines and criteria we have, but our consultants can be used um, for grant writing support. Um, it's not just for doing the actual planning work itself. Um, they have the um, capacity to do, you know, grant writing um, as well. Now, obviously, there's a there's a fee associated with that, um, but wanted to make sure you all knew that. Other um, comments on what you'd like to see in the the grant program, what you don't want to see in the grant program, what has worked well, not so well for you with the last round. 
Thank you, Heidi. Oh, you're still muted. Okay, sorry. Um, if I can throw out there, um, you know, that maybe we have some sort of population based um, uh, allocation methodology, or at least have that be a scoring factor uh, in the allocation of the funding. And Heidi, are you thinking about capital or planning funds? Oh, thank you. So maybe a show of hands since we're not getting a lot of people volunteering, um, who, who expects to apply for, for funding? Our, our three contributors so far. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> National City, Santee, excellent. So we have a we have uh, looks like four or five cities who are confident that they'll apply. That's great. And those of you who don't plan on applying, is it for capacity reasons, or is there something about the way the program is structured or will be structured? Yeah, we'd love to hear from you. Is this lunchtime food coma that we've got going on today? Yeah, sorry, I was eating. I was I've, eating some I've candy. never seen a group like not be interested in, in free money. For, for, for Imperial Beach, it just depends on how many grants we're working on already. Yeah. Um, how much the amount's going to be for? Is there going to be a match? How easy is the process? So there's a lot of things that go into it. Okay, if there's there's no match, and how much, Tyler? Like, would you would you want to, to see? Um, we want feedback on that. What for? maximum amount or minimum amount uh i i will think it over and provide that to you and if we we get to the population base obviously our population is going to be a lot less than others so that would be um i would prefer not to have that okay good to know and if you need to um chat with your colleagues and get back to us this is not your only opportunity to provide input we'll we'll follow up um after um so please you know reach out to others in your agency if you need to. Oh, Heidi. Um, yeah, um, with the, with respect to the match requirements too, that's getting harder and harder for us to provide cash matches. So if there could be okay. um, the flexibility for lower match requirements that we can meet solely through the staff contribution, that is extremely helpful for us. One of the things that we prioritize in our planning department's budget for this year was to increase our staffing capacity because without staffing capacity, we can't administer these grants. Mm -hmm. um, but that being said, we do have the staffing capacity and, you know, it's always a, a push and pull of, you know, we have to either ask for, you know, cash or staffing. And we currently have prioritized our staffing capacity, which I think was really important for us to be able to prioritize. But that does leave us with less money on the table to be able to provide the cash uh, cash match. Karen, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to support what Tyler had indicated. Obviously, we're a pretty small population here in Delmar, and so anything that's allocated on a on a per population basis, it's to the detriment of of the smaller jurisdictions. So, if there could be some equitable thought as far as how that would go into the scoring, mm -hmm. um, would also like to support the the comment regarding the no match com uh, uh, comment. Or if we can use like the in-kind staff time, that that's a huge benefit. Um, we don't have a significant budget here in, in Del Mar to really help support grant funding. And so we have to weigh, you know, just as every jurisdiction does on the administration side and, and then also on trying to be competitive, you know, just really the ability to, to throw dollars at trying to get dollars. So um, those are my comments. And I will follow up regarding the min-max uh, with some of my staff. Thank you. And I hear you. Match is always a huge challenge for us too. And we sometimes have to turn down great opportunities because of it. Lynette, go ahead. I was going to say one idea, and you may have this already, but I know it was helpful for us. And I think your team just did it. It wasn't a formal process. Is we discussed with them our concept for the project and they told us that sounded good and kind of areas that we might want to strengthen. And so maybe if there was an opportunity for folks to be able to do that before they went through the entire effort of doing a grant application. So I don't know what 
form that would be, but that might be helpful as well. Yeah, Lynette, we did have an internal discussion about that. And that was one of the things that we were talking about today and asking if you will, if you will apply so that we could reach out and kind of facilitate those conversations. Okay. But again, we're still waiting on the final guidelines. So that's going to take, we need to kind of go through those first, see what is eligible before we start having these conversations with everyone. Okay. And then um, lastly, is this slide deck available? Because I'm going to loop back with my team as well, and I'll just run through the slide deck with them or have them look through it. Um, the questions that you asked, if those could be included as well, and then we'll make sure that we get you um, further feedback from the SMEs on, on housing. Great. Absolutely. We'll do that. Okay. Heidi, I think your hand is still up from before, but I just want to verify that. Yeah, let me take it down. Okay. Great. Any other member comments? It looks like in the chat um, that uh, some folks are going to get back to us after following up with staff. So totally understand that. We did put you on the spot here today, um, but please do please do get back to us. Um, if there are no other member comments, then I'm going to ask Sam if anyone um, from the public, public comment, uh, commenters on this item. I think I, I think I heard there are no public comments. Yeah. Okay. I think Great. I heard that too. On, okay. On number three. All right. Excellent. Um, then with last item. You. Sorry. With that, we're going to move into our last item, which is um, upcoming meetings. Um, these these working group meetings are scheduled for every other month, and the next meeting is scheduled for September fifteenth. Um, at the same time, we're going to keep stick with the Thursday afternoons. Um, at the next meeting, staff wanted to provide an update on both of the items that we discussed today, um, the, the call for projects and the, the progress with REAP um, 2.0. We also wanted to discuss the Affordable Housing and Sustainable Communities Program, also known as ASIC. It's a state grant program um, and the ways that the San Diego region can be more competitive in the upcoming round of funding. Um, and then we wanted to provide an update on the Sandag Open Data Portal, which is an effort to consolidate all of the, the many, um, the, the data portals and all of the different types of demographic, economic, um, transportation data that Sandag has into a very user-friendly, comprehensive um, resource uh, and portal. So we wanted to demo that for you um, and get your input and feedback on um, data sources that you'd like to see that aren't in there already. Um, so do you have any suggested topics for um, future meetings? Do those topics sound good? Anything you'd like to add to the list? I see a thumbs up, so that's great. All right. If I could maybe mention briefly, Antoinette, that um, we are thinking about uh, perhaps the following meeting, November, having a more climate and um, energy focused meeting. So if there are members that want to provide an update on their climate action planning efforts, uh, we can provide an update on our regional efforts, really have a kind of a meeting focused around that. Yeah, absolutely. And if you want to give presentations or have discussions on any of your projects, please let us please let us know. We don't want to spend all of this time just talking at you. So we're happy to feature projects um, and have you bring items forward as well. So if there are no yeah. other... One, Go ahead. If, if, if we're going to do something about climate, um, yeah. it, it might be helpful to have sdg &E or or utility company to come talk about their programs. That's a great idea. We've been doing a lot of work with SDG and E regionally with Accelerate to Zero. Um, so definitely want to include them in that meeting. All right. If there are no other comments, then um, do we have any members of the public who would wish to speak? I do not see any hands at this time, Antonio. Okay. Then with that, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for attending the first uh, meeting of the Sustainable Communities Working Group. Looking forward to getting this group back together in September. And again, remember, please keep the feedback coming on the, the grant program. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Thanks.